Been screaming C9 and Immortals a lot. I always, everyone on the team felt like Immortals was a better team and heavy favorites coming in. I thought it was so weird that, like, I think Stixa on CLG said that C9 is gonna win 3 1. And I was like, wow, like, we, I, I wonder if, like, our style, stylistic difference is just, like, the reason why we have such different results because we do really well against Cloud9 and Scrims and we get smashed by Immortals. So I was definitely looking forward to playing Immortals in the finals, but, like, the fact that C9 won is just crazy. Like maybe they, maybe Immortals played poorly. Maybe C9 played better than they did on scrims. Like maybe I just had a bad read on both teams. But uh, yeah, it's like it's really interesting. I I feel bad for them. They went insane score. I think what is it, 35 and three over two regular splits, and both times they get knocked down. And have to play third fourth place match instantly, and that's just like. I can't think of anything more demoralizing than that. It's just setting records like that, you know, losing three games over two splits, but still you have to play in the third and fourth place match. Um, it's like, yeah, super tragic. I've been asked a lot about like the history or rivalry of TSM and C9, but I think that's kind of something in the past. When I look at C9 right now, I don't really think of them as my rivals or like, Oh, I, I like hate C9. I want to beat these guys so bad. I think they're our most like loyal scrim partner, and we learn a lot from each other. And uh, I'm pretty close with Jensen. We talk about a lot of mid lane stuff. So it was also kind of a shift of focus that I had to start seeing them as my enemy. I think this means don't let him out. In Canada, this means do not let him out of the country. <laughs> what are we waiting for? We're in your homeland. I know. What are you going to show us? I'm going to first sing the national anthem. Anthem. Oh, Canada. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Is it a good hotel we have? You don't know the hotel? It's It's the biggest one. Yes, it's good. It better be a five star. You better have a nice squash hall. Yeah. <laughs> squash hall. Well, we need to rent those out at least for the next few days. How does it feel to be back? Feels good. Feels a lot better to be here in the summer rather than the winter, where it's yeah. like negative 20 Celsius. You're not from Toronto, right? No, I'm not from Toronto. What are you Toronto. asking the Vincent? I'm actually from Vancouver. Vincent. What are you most excited to do when you have that back? I decided to eat Tim Hortons, have myself 10 Timbits and Wait, tell me what you cap. told me yesterday. What did I tell you yesterday? You told me you wanted that shit all over C9. Wait, I did not say that! <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's what? actually a... Uh... The CNN Tower? Oh, it's the CNN Tower. I mean CN Tower. I mean CN Tower. So it feels pretty nice to be in Canada. You know, I'm showing my team around, uh, kind of. Um, I don't really know Toronto too well, but I've been telling them about the food, like, you know, go to Tim Hortons. I'm pretty sure everyone's been telling them to go to Tim Hortons. And the, I don't think Bjergsen has had the poutine yet, but it's pretty good. And yeah, it just feels really nice to be back in Canada. Of course, I don't I hate the States. I love the States too, but it feels nice to be home. So traveling to Canada felt like kind of like any other event because usually at events we just go from airport to hotel and then to the venue and then like repeat those but like going into I thought Canada was going to be a lot more cold because of uh, like when I grew up I had like some friends from Canada and they were like saying oh it's always like super freezing and sometimes even if you're breathing then you could like die if you were just breathing normally because it was so cold so maybe I got pranked or something, but it was like super hot, at least in Toronto, so that's like a positive thing. Beer, do you know how to swim? Of course I know how to swim. There's a swimming class in Denmark. They... Oh wait, it's not even that far down. Look, you can see the bottom. Oh, it's not the bottom, really? Yeah, here. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Oh my god. It's a brand building moment, oh, Dennis. Shit. It's a brand it's building good. moment where you go in the water for the fans. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> where you go in the water oh, oh, oh. for the fans, dude. Dennis wet scaring. And the view from our hotel was pretty nice. We could see like the whole lake. I don't know what it's called, but like a famous lake or something. Canada Center, Max. Why? You go in there to play some good old scrims. Get some scrimmage on. Playing to practice, you know, at the venue. See how it is. Oh. <laughs> We're unpacking for our uh, scrims today. Hello, we just arrived in the Air Canada Center. It is Thursday, I think, and we're just uh, gonna be practicing for the event. I guess we came here a few days early to like adjust our schedule because it's a three hour time difference. So yeah, we're just getting set up for practice. Welcome to Toronto. And we have hopefully at the least 10 scrimmages before we go on stage. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, kind of our expectations and our hopes for this last moment of training that we have. I think that um, we are gonna need to start thinking about our opponent a lot if we want to make sure that we come into these trainings motivated. I don't mean thinking about our opponent like, um, you know, dwelling on them and, and worrying about them. I mean, knowing that the mindset that they have right now is one that is uh, very fierce. So they're coming in with a lot of momentum both in their training and off of the hot off the presses in the semifinals. And they are looking to kind of restore C9's honor and show up in a finals again and take a crown for North America. And I think that like the drive that they have and the ambition that they have right now is a lot more than what we have to work with, given that like we're a squad that was in the last eight finals. So I would like each of you to share Something, sorry, something that you expect over the next 10 scrims, like something that you expect for yourself and for the team in terms of like how the training is gonna go. And then something that you hope for over the next two days for the training that is coming. Um, well, we're going into scrims. Of course, we're gonna be practicing our comps um, that we usually play, probably like the ones that we practiced against CLG. Of course, we did add so we'll probably try that out. And then I expect us to be ready for those comps by the 10 scrims. Um, my parents are coming to watch, so hopefully I play well. And win. Huh? And win. Yes, of okay. course. Yes. All right. I expect us to just be really critical in these scrims because we might be winning. And then like it can be really easy to be like, okay, everything we did when we were winning is good. But then, like, I don't know, I guess, like, just theorycrafting against the imaginary opponent that plays better than our screen partners. So, because, like, I think C9 is going to be better than both our screen partners. And I just hope everyone, when they get behind, is still fine with, like, communicating and playing for the comeback. Expect everyone to be, like, really motivated and focused on winning and, like, practicing really hard for these scrims and just like not being distracted by other stuff. And then I hope it all com comes together on stage and we pull it in. I hope the scrims are not gonna be as bad as event scrims usually are. I feel like at events the scrims usually just become really low quality. I don't know what I expect. I, I hope you that just we- live uh, life moment to moment, don't you? Two more hopes, <laughs> uh, two hopes I guess. Hope that we just get ready for C9. I expect that we just play enough games. Also here, I think once we play our comps again, it give people like confidence or confidence in our comps and they feel like we can pull them out on stage. I think just having a few games like when we're here so close to playing the match 
just getting through all our comps again gives people a lot of like hope uh, that we can execute them on stage. And I hope practicing here and like the chair sucking and all this stuff doesn't affect our practice. And we don't like use it as excuses, even though it might, it might be annoying. We should just try to pass it and try to play as well as we do at home. We're in an environment now that we can't control, and we. We train with controlled environments as long as we can throughout the year in order to maximize our effectiveness. And one downside of that is that you don't get very mentally resilient. If you look at like track and swimming athletes, they never know when they're going to compete. You go to a meet and like, it can just be like, oh, your heat's up and you got to jump on the block and go. So you have to be really ready to just like show up and perform in any situation. Whereas like in esport, we're able to control so much of an environment. So I want you guys to think about really what can you control in this room and in this like scrim environment and nothing out there we can't control anything of our opponents how much effort they bring in to the scrims we can't control the internet that much or like even the the air the only thing that we control is like what we have here in this room our like group cohesion and our strategy and then like what you have sitting in that chair like your approach and your mentality towards the game so when you get to these environments where you have the last few quality trainings before um, before a big match like this. I think the biggest difference between like the champions and the people who end up in the third and fourth place match is like how much are you able to take out of what we're doing and like drill yourself on it versus like how many excuses do you give yourself to make? All right, let's kick it off. Yeah, I think. What Dennis says is typically true, where <clears throat> when you're screaming at an event, it just doesn't feel as good as when you're screaming at home or like we're used to. And it's like that for every team pretty much. So the practice is like definitely a lot worse than it normally is. And it's kind of up to like the team who shows up on stage to win instead of just like going off the best practice because everyone's just like in a completely new environment. I think the scrims this time around were kind of average to like below average. We didn't really perform the best we could have, but like playing against other teams who were also not performing, it was just like kind of hard to tell how good we were. Like we weren't like stomping as much as we are used to, so. I have, I don't know, I'm so mobile that I there's not a long them. time where I can't do damage. So here I just mm -hmm. dash on. Um, They're just super split up in this fight. Yeah, like that's good. Let's group it was good because we didn't just run into the caves and try yeah. to kill them when we just like won. Yeah, yeah that was good. Shot. Whoops. We had really bad practice uh, due to some like politics stuff with the morals, and we we also had like not only like low quality of practice, which is our fault, but just the like the number of games that we could play was really limited. And I was like a little bit concerned with us, not about C9. I knew C9 was like good, but not that great. I was more concerned about us. Like, did we lose our magic from the regular season? Because like we'd been going full steam this entire time. We didn't. We were just really, really like set on not slowing down, and we were kind of forced to slow down a little bit towards the end. But I'm glad that everyone was like, we just put in a hundred percent of our time, even when we weren't practicing. We were always thinking about the game, and I think that really helped uh, coming in against C9. We like imagined all the plays that they would make against us, and we came up with counter plays. And it's just like we're fighting an imaginary opponent, you know. So all you can do is theory craft. Kevin, what is this? It's my Kinder Egg Surprise toy. What'd you get? I got a pterodactyl. Very nice pterodactyl. It's a pterodactyl. Oh, the dinosaurs, yeah, I got this one. Fuck. I wish you had this one. This one or this one looks way cooler. Nod. Nah, why is it a turd? No, why are you fucking with my fucking dinosaur? Why is it a turd? We're waiting on Immortals vs. CLG to start. But what's before that? What's before that? 
Oh, oh, waiting for Soren to get MVP. Nobody told me that he got MVP until today. So, uh, yeah, well, I guess we're waiting on the ceremony to start. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016 Summer Split MVP, Bjorkson! Bjorkson led TSM to a 17 and 1 regular season. The best in TSM's history. Take your award. Bjergsen, this is actually your third time winning the MVP award. No one else in North America has won it more than once. What does that mean to you? Obviously, it means a lot. Um, I think this year it means more than ever because NA has just grown stronger and stronger each split. And this season, I think NA has the strongest individual players that they've ever had. So I honestly didn't expect to win this award today and be here. So I'm, I'm very happy. It, it is a team game. And without my team, I wouldn't be here. And I wouldn't look, I wouldn't look good enough to get this award. And, uh, I think especially Doublelift has taught me a lot about, you know, he's a very creative player. He makes calls that I would never think of. And he makes me think outside the box a lot. He's very decisive and he's taught me just, he's improved me a lot as like a teammate and a caller within the game. So I'm really grateful to have been able to play with Doublelift. And I think he deserves this award just as much as I do. Thank you very much, Bjergsen. Give it up one more time for the MVP. I was fortunate enough to win the MVP award for the regular summer split and it feels really good because in the, I think I already said this in the interview with Jed on stage, but when I first came to NA, I felt like the overall region and individual players were pretty weak. So <clears throat> getting the MVP at that point was kind of, I kind of expected it or I kind of had a feeling that it might happen. But now I think there are just, there are a ton of really, really strong players. like. The other people that were really highly voted were like Double Lift and Rain Over, and I think they deserve it just as much as me. So um, this time it definitely felt more special than before because the overall level of the region has just become a lot higher. I'm not sure if it's kind of a good mentality to have, but I always kind of prepare myself for the worst. I feel like every time in the past where I've gone in thinking that we're, I'm going to do Super Bowl, we're going to do Super Bowl, we're going to win this series, we've always lost. That's how I felt against CLG in the Springsfield Finals. I felt really confident we lost. That's how I felt in like 2014 when we, we played against Unicorns of Love, and that's probably the worst series I've ever played in my life. So ever since those two experiences, I just started to come in thinking that you know, I try to have the underdog mentality, even though a lot of people think that we're going to win. I try to have the, I'm going to lean against Jensen. Jensen plays really well. I need to make sure I'm playing at my very best to beat him. And yeah, I'm just, I'm always imagining the worst and thinking, <clears throat> you know, maybe we could lose. Uh, C9 is really strong. I'm trying to have an underdog mentality. I feel like all split what I witnessed uh, and what's come to define our success as a squad has been the amount of work that we put in the, into the game and how much that you guys can take in terms of like emotional criticism and emotional growth. So that's essentially like two components. First of all, like hard work and grit, something that clearly defines TSM now as it has defined TSM like throughout all of its history. Uh, and being a big boys club. I think maybe TSM is the big boys club of eSport in terms of the ability to dish it out and the ability to take it from our teammates, from our coaches, from our owners, from the media, and from even from our fans who hold us to the highest standards of any club in the game. So I think that we have purpose to spare this weekend. We want this more than C9 and we, we deserve it more than them. And we need to play like we have trained harder and longer than them, which means we need to be precise and tight and aggressive and bring home the title. So I think that our reasons are threefold. Redemption from losing an entire roster a year ago, almost. Like CLG did last split uh, when they won the spring finals, they said they were playing for everybody who's not on stage right now. That's what we're doing. We're playing for every TSM member who was ever up on that stage or, or who quit in order to give you guys space to come in and carry the banner. 
Uh, Revenge, so this is El Clasico against C9. Proving that C9 all those times during the split when they wouldn't train with us in the evening. Um, showing that the little tricks, like their attempt to barricade us this week, and like uh, not getting a great strategic partnership, um, can't beat the pure effort that we put out. That pure craft that you guys have honed beats cunning. So we need to prove to them that that stuff doesn't work, that it's just being good. And then finally sending a message, and not like what you mentioned in TSM Legends, which is fine, sending a message to the world, but sending a message to yourself that you can stand on the world stage, that you can translate your training that we've done the split into the highest of stakes performances. Seeing you throughout the split has really like taught me the culture of the squad. When I was looking to find it in history, I really needed to look like in the present, and like how you guys generate TSM's culture now. And I think that you have done an admirable job of creating a meaning for like what this organization stands for, just out of your own integrity and your own desire to see it, to see success for yourselves. So yeah, there's only one word, annihilation. Live from the Air Canada Center in Toronto, Ontario. Uh, this battle's about to explode. Introducing first, making their fifth appearance in the LCS Finals, and vying for their third championship title, it's perennial powerhouse, Cloud9! Introducing their opponents. They're the only team to qualify for every LCS final and every world championship. T.S.M. In the top lane, semifinals player of the series, Hanser. LCS finalist, Spence Garen! It's three-time LCS split MVP in the mid lane, Bjergsen! At 80 carry, it's the all-time LCS kill leader, give it up for double lift! Support. It's the rookie of the split, Biofrost! <laughs> and coaching for TSM, the coach of the split, Parth! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear one more time for TSM! Control me in, and I can't slow down. TSM in a no. 2v3, they don't like this one! The Flash! Oh, he doesn't quite land him again! Oh, from down, down! Sneaky secures it! However, the trade kill comes back through. Nicely done by Bjergsen, picking up Jensen. The Flash in a devour. Biofrost keeps him safe for now. Bjergsen exhausted, running away for dear life. But Sven still burns down the poison. Beautiful Just pillar! Just too much for him. Pillar to lie at a time. Huge knockup! And here comes the backline access! C9 have already picked up one, but how many more can they really get? The snipe comes through. Media takes him out, and it's gonna be a whitewash. No one from TSM can stand up to the damage output. Yes, I think I'm going to the case. You just have to try, no. bro. Yeah. I can't go. Okay. That's over. Yeah. Yeah, do you. As they go, and game one goes to Cloud9! Yeah. Uh. Come. We picked up harder comp to play on the first game. We should have picked the easier comp to play, because their comp's easier to play. And I think that 
we played an incredibly reactive game and they just like waited out like all of their cooldowns and set up all of their fights and made every single engage on us and caught us out. We weren't to objectives on time. Um, and there was no like, like there was a lot of fear about like Shen ulti, even though when we had global parity, like we had equal TP advantage to their global and we were always like stymieing plays up until about 11 minutes because of that. Um, so I just saw like a, a very reactive team, very like unsolo mid team. And then after you got solo killed mid, um, like your Vlad and team fights is like, was like fundamentally different from the Vlad and team fights that we've seen all week where like, you know, to go on the carries, you're effing the Ash, you know, and you're like in the back line. I think in the last team fight, you cast your ulti on Rek'Sai. Even. Yeah, I just couldn't get in against their comp. Did too many slows and peel. I just got from CC by Electron to pillar cast CW, so. I think it was definitely just an anti black comp that they built. It felt really hard for me to play against. Like, it wasn't like I wasn't trying to get into the back line. I was just permanently slowed by all of their slows. Like, it was insane. I just couldn't move. So, game one, I think. It's like really typical f for us that we always lose game one because for some reason everyone's just like not mentally prepared or just like super focused. We just like need to take one game to like warm up. I'm not sure what it is, but we always tend to lose game one in like a long series, whether it's like scrims or on stage. And it was just like, I don't even think it had much to do with the draft. It's just everyone wasn't playing super cleanly, and we needed like a, a warm up game. You need to play a strong laning phase. They need to get out of it quick, and they need to push the aggression onto C9. And I think that's the way if TSM wants to get back in the series, that they have to do it. Look on ramp. I'm watching. I'm no, no, Mega. No, no, Mega. We're fighting both. I'm moving. I'm moving. Look on ramp. I'm tipping mine. I'm tipping mine. Tipping mine. Look is coming first. I'm, I'm going for tunnel. I'm going for tunnel. Ten seconds away. Tunnel flash down. I'm on Ash. I'm on Ash. I'm on Ash. I'm on Gragas. 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 I'm here. Go with Echo. I'm ulting. Trying to look really low. Trying to look low. Really low. No. No, 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 no. no. Nice. 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 Can nice. we see? You have a wave. You have a wave. I just say it. You have to say it. I'm playing so bad. Okay, I'm going top. Oh, oh, look at Nar. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. We have no flash. I'm here. Can I have a flash? I'm an Ash, I'm an Ash! Okay. Yeah, Ash, I'm an 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 Ash, it was just a warm-up game before. It was just a warm-up game. Now we got it. I played so bad. It's fine, it's fine. And game two goes to TSM. 8-0-6 for double lift on the gin. An incredible performance as him and Bjergsen really were putting out so much damage and impact was just or, sorry, Monster rather, who had massive impact going on to Jensen in every single team. I think what helped us shake off the first loss for game two was just playing a completely different comp and just feeling like it was a completely fresh game. I think it just helped us a lot because our comp in game two had a really different goal and we could kind of reorganize ourselves and be like, all right, you know, this happened, this game really sucked, but now we have this new strategy and we just need to try to execute this strategy. And overall, the game two strategy and with the fresh mindset, it was just much easier. To play. Hard carry in game two. Hawker's now being held down. Jerkyo has no great buff and he's looking. Goes Ooh. forward to land the knock up. Flashes to knock him back in though, and it's going to be dangerous. They're trading they blows back it. and forth, and Svenskar doing what he can to make it all happen. The poison, the heal, Medio splits into four. Jensen still chased but doesn't have the damage, and that's going to be two kills, you assume. Coming in for TSM as Medios will lose his life. Hotzer gets a kill. I can't get the W, okay? okay. Zack, 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 Zack. Zack, I'm in the back. No, he's not teaming. No, he's not teaming. What's the flash out? I'm attacking. Oh. I'm looking. I'm I got Zack. I got Zack. Can we go? Can we go? Yeah. Can we dash? I have flash out. I got him. Nice. Go for Trundle. Go for Trundle. I'm going for Trundle. I'm going for Trundle. I'm going for Trundle. I'm going for Trundle. He's done. Come on, Nar! I'm back to us. No slow's gonna land for Jensen. Before Hiss will do it. Here comes Impact on the side, but gets sniped out. And Bjergsen gets the fourth kill of the fight. You guys are fucking high key. Woo! Let's go! Sub 30 minutes, the TSM we expected twice in a row now. Fast, hardcore, crushing it. And now they're heading back up to their stage to make it one last game. Thank you.
might get a conversion on right now. Running up onto this one, trying to figure out where it's It's because they know the, the strat from Talia. He's going to go pick the first camp. It's the flash wave, but that means body slam is easy. And Spencer. Mark 7 5. Do everything. We got first spot here. Kin 5. Kin 5. We got him. We got him. We got him. We got him. Nice! Good shit. Nice. Fucking, Fucking nice, Dennis. <laughs> Alright, good job. Push, 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 push. No flash. I'm taking his blue here. Yeah, for sure. He's gonna go down. Dierkson down to half. Here comes the battle back as Fen's gonna lose his life. Both junglers now dead. 4v3, but Smoothie's injured. They've gotta be careful. Double could clean it up. Here comes the damage half, but Smoothie's gonna go down. Hawks are staying alive. No! Oh, he's he's the Megadar! It's up to Impact! And Double is back! He's a hero! As we're no. never on the same target, we really need to call <laughs> targets and be on the same target. Oh, oh, they're going mid, they're going mid! I'm watching. I'm behind, I'm behind. Look at no, he's Peter, he's Peter. They're diving, they're diving. Look at Peter, look at Peter. I instantly died. I shot it. I'm up, bro. You guys are 4v4. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Back up, back up, back up. Look at Tony. I'm on Nara. Don't group up on the dot. No, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. I'm behind him. I'm on Jim. I'm dead, I'm dead. You should back, you should back, you should back. Back, back, back. I'm on Nara, I'm on Nara. I'm GA. Play on Peter, play on Peter. I'm on GA. Tell him that's it. Jim no flash, Jim no flash. I'm on Jenny, I'm on Jenny. I'm chasing, bro. I'm on Jenny, I'm on Jenny. I'm chasing, bro. I'm on Jenny. Nice, nice, nice. I'm on Jenny. Don't let him get away. I'm in the game, I'm in the game. Oh, he won it right away. Yeah, we won, we won. We won, we won. Oh, fuck, I feel so bad. That's okay. At least we won. I'll tank, I'll tank. End the game. I think all of us are playing a little weird. That's okay. They're playing weirder, I guess. That's fucking I guess. This shit, Dude, yes. Dennis, your fucking cheese is so oh Talia's still alive, by the way. Talia's yeah, still alive. Let me tank, let me tank. Don't die to Talia, please. In the game, in the game. Okay. Tower, tower, tower. Can we, can we next to stop him? Alright, now we kill Talia. Okay, now we, now now we, we go for Talia, Talia right? Now, now, no, now, now, really? Now we go for No, no, don't do it, don't do it. Now we go Talia. Do you guys wanna do it? No, 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 no. Their fourth North American Championship! is theirs. And the fourth game was the closest of all of them. They really had to fight for that last game. If you're looking at Cloud9 right now, you can see the disappointment because they know they have to Winning moment felt really good. I think the best part about kind of winning is that to be able to win the finals, you always have to win as a team. And this was one of those moments where I felt like it wasn't up to me to carry. I didn't even feel like I played particularly well, but I felt like, you know, my team really carried me and kind of as a team, we won. And that's the same way I felt in 2014 summer was that I wasn't the main carry. I wasn't really super happy with my performance, but we won as a team and that makes it feel so much better. So finally winning a finals felt like super great because I've been in two other finals before and I always lost and just being able to like win it and say that you actually won a split and like being the best team in your region is like it's like an amazing feeling and I'm kind of happy that I did it with uh, Kevin and Bifrost as well as our three of the five on the team is the first time winning a split so is this the first time you won a split? Yeah. The first time I won, it felt so fucking good. Same, dude. I felt like the king of the world. Now I just feel sad because I played bad. But you lost. You know, I feel sad because I played bad. It was just feel like... good, though. Yeah, Dennis is a fucking MVP. Dennis is MVP. Dennis is beast. I wonder yeah, how like the fuck I got the MVP. The I wonder. You really I don't even know what you the fuck I did. Shut down medios. Yeah. yeah. I was like, dude, what? he was 0 and what? 7 in the last game. Yeah, I guess he was. You know, so right? I didn't really. I didn't really feel like it. 
don't know. Dude, that's because you're just. I think in the game it's so hard to figure out what's going on. I guess. But then if we watch the replays, then maybe I can realize. But after game one, I was like, well, this may be the last best of five I play when I get benched from the team. I had a great time, guys, but then I got so. Oh my god, it's so awesome to meet you guys! So actually winning the game was pretty awesome, but I was still like really disappointed in myself, so actually being the winner, I didn't care as much as I should have. It was just like, oh cool, I'm the winner today, but I wish I could have played better. And I just like have regrets about my own performance instead of like focusing on winning. But I think it's still pretty awesome. Well, in the winning team fight, actually, both supports died instantly, and it was just a 4v4. So I was just watching the team fight, and my heart was like pounding so much. I was just watching them fight crazily, and I was like, oh my god, are we gonna do this? And then it was so intense. Talia flashed in, I was like, oh my god, are we gonna lose it right here? Are we gonna lose the fight? And then we actually won. I was just super excited. I'm like, holy shit, are we actually gonna win? And then we won. So. I just couldn't really feel anything. Um, I was also a little bit sad because I couldn't be part of the winning team fight, but yeah, um, it was definitely a moment that I'll probably remember for the rest of my life. Yeah, winning feels pretty good. I always say that winning feels less good than losing feels bad, and that's what makes like a really good competitor is like, I mean, it is really important to celebrate your victories, but all of us were like really happy. And then it was like, okay, s settle down after like an hour of it. But then losing feels awful for like days. And I don't know, after we won, everyone was like obviously in a super good mood. I, I felt like the last team fight of the game was like too easy. It was just like C9 threw themselves at us. They all just died one by one. And I was like, wow, they like, they must have been really desperate because that was like way too easy. Um, the second to last team fight though was pretty hypey. And I was like pretty grateful that my team let me play Lucian, which is off meta for NA at least. And yeah, I guess winning the series just feels nice. It feels nice that Kevin, Dennis, and Vincent get to win their first title. It feels feels right that TSM would reclaim it. And like, I don't know. It just feels justified because I think we are the best team. We work the hardest, put in the most t time and effort. And so we deserve the title. <laughs>